Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my monthly roundup. Now I admittedly missed, I think, not only one, but the last two of these, which I'm embarrassed by. I have had so much makeup come in, which is super exciting. I love trying any brand, any new makeup, but it's been hard to keep up. I still have boxes of stuff that I need to try. It's really hard to continue to try products to give you guys full reviews like I'm gonna do today, but also try all of the new stuff. There's literally like 800 cream blushes and tinted moisturizers and lipsticks and eyeshadow palettes that I'm just like, how am I gonna review all of these? So I have a pretty big box of products here to give you my full review on, and it's mostly gonna be makeup. There's a couple hair and skin products, but stuff I purchased in Sephora hauls or I used in trying new makeup. I will link everything down below. Quickly, I really just wanted to play around with my makeup today. I did a neon look yesterday with new makeup, and I was inspired to play with some color, so I did use the Lunar Beauty Facelift Life's a Drag palette. I can link down below, but I'm loving this look. I was just getting bored of myself because I usually just do like a wing and a brown in the crease, but I was like, let me play around. So I didn't film it, unfortunately, but I had fun playing with makeup and I feel inspired and that's kind of what it's all about. So I will link that down below, but if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy videos like this. It really helps me out. And let's go ahead and get into really a ton of speed reviews. I am gonna be using the same format that I did in my last monthly roundup, which is essentially starting out with the great products. These are products that I'm loving, that I recommend, that I've really been enjoying, that I think stand out in the market. Then I'm gonna move on to good products. Products that aren't bad, but not necessarily wowing me. Maybe they would wow you if you had a different skin type or preference, and I will note that as we go on and then not so good products. So products that I just wouldn't recommend that didn't work out for me. Maybe they would work for you and I'll kind of tell you that, but really products that I'm just not impressed with. So let's start off with the great products. I like to start off with a positive note and most of the products are going to land in the great or the good then you're gonna have those duds. So let's start off with the great. So let's start off with a product that I can't stop using. Every time I use this, I just feel beautiful. It does exactly what it's supposed to do and I really love the quality of these products. These are the new palettes from Jaclyn Cosmetics. So she came out with an entire range. I'm gonna be talking about all the products today, but the Rouge Romance Matte Blush Palettes are absolutely stunning. These are not for the faint of heart. So if you don't like a really bright blush, you will not get on with these. If you do like a baby doll cheek or a really hot red orange pink blush these will be your dream product the formula is beautiful it is matte but it doesn't look dry very pigmented so one tap in tap your brush off and then blend on I can't tell you which one I like more I am wearing both they feel heavy and substantial so you do have a warm toned and a cool toned so this is the cool toned I would say if you're a baby doll pink blush lover go for the cool toned honestly they're both absolutely gorgeous and if you prefer that kind of peachy orangey red blush tones, more of that burnt look, go for the warm tone. I have to say that this is such a beautiful formula. It just really livens up your cheeks. Again, not for the faint of heart, very pigmented, but I love these products. I am a blush fanatic, you guys know this, and blush just really brings me to life. These do it for me. I think they are super high quality. I love the colors, and every time I put these on, I just feel like a doll. So along with the blush palettes, Jaclyn did release some other products. This is also a hit for me, and this is gonna be her cream to powder blush sticks. I really thought I wouldn't like these, but you guys saw my reaction when I did my video and I've continued to use these. Now I will say I did use another shade which was deeper and I didn't love it as much. I think the color just wasn't for me. The two that I really like are Swoon is number one and Empress. These really are a cream to powder, so they do kind of go from a creamy consistency to kind of that soft matte feel, but they're not drying and they're really easy to use. I use them over powder, which worked beautifully. Definitely use a sponge and really light pressure. That's what I recommend. They're very pigmented, so you don't need a lot. These are the colors that I'm just going for. If you want that poppy, you know, creamsicle blush or the hot pink, I think you would really enjoy these. I just love that they're smoothing on the skin. They almost gave me like a blurred soft matte effect they did not lift my powder, they lasted well, and they gave me that really beautiful, I don't know, like a lit from within color, and I think it's really the color she chose. Just because these have no shimmer or glitter, but the colors just really liven up your face, so these are a hit. 
Speaking of cream blushes, I had to mention this quickly. If you've been watching my channel, this is not gonna surprise you, but the Say Beauty Dew blushes are 100% a hit. I adore these. They are so gorgeous. They're dewy, but they're kind of light feeling. If you compare them to maybe like the Tower 28, which I love as well, those are quite thick and they can feel tacky on the face. These are a thinner formula, very nice and smoothing on the skin, but also giving you that glowy look. Again, they go over powder if you apply them very lightly with a sponge. The colors are stunning. I do not love the packaging because I feel like you have to use a lot because you have to get the doe foot out. Now I will say if you did tap it on your skin, you'd probably use less, but for me, I just don't wanna kind of risk lifting my powder and I like to put these on over powder. So here's a couple of the shades, peachy, rosy. Not much else I can say other than these are absolutely stunning if you're looking for something that goes over powder but is gonna give you that really fresh, dewy cheek without feeling heavy, I think you'd really like these. Another cream blush hit for me is going to be the LYS Cream Blushes. Now I did use these quite a while ago but I really wanted to update on them. These are absolutely stunning. They're called the Satin Matte Cream Blushes. So I have the shade here, I believe, Inspire. This is a really punchy, I don't know, like that terracotta red burnt color, beautiful. And then also I have the shade Confident, which is more of a mauve pink. These are absolutely stunning. They are sort of stiffer in the sense that you really kind of have to work in. I can see that satin matte feel, very pigmented. Again, they blend beautifully, but I feel like these are just beautiful for that really flushed burnt look. The colors in here are not like the Jaclyn colors where they're really light and sort of like baby doll. These are more of like the burnt, really like mauve terracotta shades, but I really love them. They blend beautifully over powder. Again, just use a beauty blender. So I had to mention them because I feel like I used them in a couple videos and never updated, but they are definitely gorgeous. There's so many cream blushes right now, I can't keep up, but these are a great pick as well. Switching gears a little bit, I have to shout out this powder because I was really impressed with it. It's a really nice option and they have quite a bit of shades if you're looking for a loose setting powder. This is new from Lorac and this is their Pro Loose Setting Powder. I demoed this in a couple videos and I was quite impressed with it. I've continued to reach for it. It's a very lightweight powder. It definitely blurs and sets, but it's not heavy like the Laura Mercier Translucent. And I find that it's not overly pigmented. It's not necessarily translucent, it's sort of right in the middle. So this vanilla shade is really light, but it doesn't do a ton of brightening or darkening. It just kind of sets. So I would say it does have a little bit of a pigment, but it's nothing heavy like a brightening powder would or like the Jaclyn Cosmetics one. This one's a little bit softer. It's very smoothing, lightweight, and I feel like it just does a beautiful job at blurring the T-zone and also locking in your makeup. Like I said, they do have a few different shades, but I've really been enjoying it. I think this is a hit from Lorac. Another hit, this is a no-brainer for me. I have recommended this product to you guys multiple times and they did come out with new shades and scents. These are the Too Faced Hangover Pillow Bombs. These are essentially a really cooling, sort of menthol feeling balm for your lips. They feel amazing. I wear the original or I use it every night before bed. They came out with like chocolate, mango, banana, and also watermelon. My two picks would be the watermelon and the mango. They smell just like they say they do. They just coat your lips and really treat them if they're feeling dry. And these do have a slight tint. It's nothing crazy, but if you're gonna be wearing it during the day and you want a very slight pinky or peachy tint, I think you would enjoy these, but you really can't go wrong with the original or these. I've been loving them. Another lip product that I've been loving that is more of a lipstick. These are the newest release from Huda Beauty in terms of lips. These are the cream lipsticks. So she has her Power Matte Bullet Lipsticks, which I love. They have sort of a powdery feel, but they're not super drying. These are essentially kind of the same thing except for their cream. So they're the same kind of color story, same packaging, but they're very creamy. So they give you that really moisturized feel. So this one is Angel. It's so beautiful. I love this color. And the other one I have right here, I think it's called Empress. Yes. So this is more of a nude, but they're beautiful. They have a nice pigment to them and they're just really hydrating on the lips. The only thing I will say is in the summertime, be careful rolling them up because they will sort of melt and slide off. So you have to be really careful when you apply them, but they're super beautiful, very high shine. They're sort of like a really tinted balm, almost like a balm lipstick, but they have that full color and that high shine. They just feel really nice on the lips. 
Also quickly have to rave about my Lawless Lip Plumping Glosses. I just love these so much. Now, I love these for a different reason than I love the Too Faced. These ones feel incredible, but they also look incredible. The Too Faced is really just a treatment. The Lawless is sort of like a really moisturizing treatment, but it's also gorgeous. So you can top lipsticks with it, wear it alone, wear it with a lip liner. I wouldn't wear these to bed just because they're really beautiful and I would wear them during the day, but I do apply these before I do my makeup. So a lot of times I will put my lip stain on, put these on, and it just gives me a nice hydration and they look beautiful. I really love both shades. So there's Daisy Pink, which is again, like a light baby pink. These are super thick and they coat your lips. If you don't like a tacky or thick, gloss. I don't know if you would like these. They're not quite like a MAC lip gloss, but they definitely are thick. So they're going to really hug your lips and smooth everything out. And then the other shade is Velvet, which I also adore. Velvet is just more of a mauve muted pink. These are incredible. I don't know what else to say other than I need more shades. Another hit for me is something that I didn't like when I first tried it because I had a sample size. I went ahead and listened to your guys' feedback and got the full size and I'm loving it. This is the Bite Upswing Mascara. It's really nice. It gives you nice volume and length. It reminds me sort of of Too Faced Damn Girl, but easier to use. It's a little bit messy in the sense that it has quite a big brush, again, like the Too Faced, so you really have to kind of be mindful. You don't just like throw it on and go, but this is a really nice one when I don't wanna wear lashes. Maybe I have like a soft wing or a smoky wing, and I just want something that's really gonna make my lashes pop. This is a great option, so the hype on this is real. It's really nice. If you have really small lashes and you just feel like no mascara does anything for them, try this one out. Also quickly do wanna to touch on the cream blushes from Melt Cosmetics. I honestly don't think I updated on this other than mentioning them in favorites, but I have to say this is one of the easiest formulas to work with. If you want something that's not gonna be intensely tacky or heavy, gonna blend effortlessly, I would say this is probably the most user-friendly cream blush that I may own. They just blend perfectly. You don't have to work hard, and I love this color Sandy Cheeks, but I have to say my favorite is Honey Thief, which are we surprised? No. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. They knocked it out of the park with this formula. I don't think I've heard anybody not like these because they really are that good. Also gotta hand it to NARS. They really just dropped this random palette. This is the Orgasm on the Beach palette. This is limited edition, and I have to say that this is really beautiful. Now, the one thing I will say is if you have texture and you do not like a shimmery blush that is going to essentially enhance your texture, then this would not be for you because it definitely is gonna do that. But the colors seem different. Like even the orgasm shade just seems a little bit more punchy than the original. It's this one right here, but it swatches more intensely, almost like their Orgasm X palette that I really enjoyed. So I feel like they bumped it up a little bit. I do have to say though, how many orgasm palettes and orgasm blushes do we need? I mean, it's a little bit much, but I will say that I love this. I love that you have an array of shimmery products. You can use this as an eyeshadow bronzer or highlighter depending on your skin tone. And the red in here really punches and just gives you really honestly that flushed, glowy look, especially if you have oily combo skin and you don't enjoy cream products, but you feel like you just want a glowy product to sweep over your face, you really might enjoy this. So I like it, just know that if you have texture and you don't want that enhanced in any way, this might not be the best, but if it doesn't bother you and you really want that glowy look, I think you'd really enjoy this. Couple more products in the great category and then we will move on to the good. But I did wanna give a shout out to the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Foundation. I think she really killed it with this launch. This is my favorite foundation that she's ever come out with, even in the concealers as well. This just really wowed me. It does look nice and healthy on the skin, but it's not heavy or greasy and it doesn't enhance my texture. It has just enough coverage and that's what I'm loving. Brands are bumping up the coverage while still making foundations or skin tints look natural. I think in the past when I would hear tinted moisturizer or something like that, I would say, well, I can't use it because I have rosacea and redness and I can't really spot conceal my entire T-zone. So I was turned off and I would try tinted 
moisturizers that would smear around and literally give me absolutely no coverage and it was like, well, I, I need a foundation. This is sort of right in between. So if you want it more sheer, you can sheer it out, but you can also build it up in areas that you need it like I do in my T-zone. The wear is pretty decent for a skin tint. I mean, it's not gonna be a 12 hour double wear kind of wear, but I would say you get a good seven, eight hours. You're gonna get a little bit glowy, a little bit oily depending on your skin type and you can just blot and go. So I think she did a great job with this release. Now you know I wasn't going to do my great products without going nuts over this Patrick Ta palette. This is his first eyeshadow palette, the Major Dimension palette. I've used this so many times. This is my go-to if I want a neutral glam look. What makes this special is the two creams down here and they're actually a great formula. So I've seen creams in the past with like the Huda Beauty palettes that were really dry, not pigmented. These are beautifully pigmented and they have a nice tack to them. So they really do set beautifully as a base. And then you have really gorgeous metallic shades again that you can put over the creams and really make them pop and then a couple really glittery shades which don't look like a lot swatched but if you haven't seen my video check out my video that I did with this to me the toppers are like sophisticated glitter so they're not chunky glitter but they give that really beautiful wet glitter look the mattes blend beautifully are you going to be able to get 50 different looks out of this probably not this is probably going to be sort of a one trick pony but if you love neutrals and that's what you're using all the time and you want a great quality palette that performs beautifully and has different textures i would highly recommend this to finish off the great category i have to give it to bk beauty brushes the hype on the these is real. These are such high quality. They blend so well. I love the shapes and just everything about these. So the 101 is probably my favorite. It's just a stellar brush for foundation. If you do use a lot of cream products, this would be great for blending out cream bronzer, contour, blush. I'm also loving the 108. Perfect for putting powder right down my T-zone. I just can't say enough good things. I've also been enjoying the 104. Really fluffy powder brush for bronzer. I mean, honestly, the eye brushes, I've mentioned a couple more in my favorites. I just keep using them and discovering new favorites. There's not been one that I was like, eh, that's not good. These are investment brushes. They're super high quality. I know that they're not the most affordable, but if you're looking for a specific brush, let's say a foundation brush, the 101 is worth the money. It's just that good. So I have to say, love, love, love these. I just can't stop using them and I just keep discovering new favorites. They're just very high quality. I think you would really enjoy them if you pick them up. So now that I've gone over all of the great products, I hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, mention it down below. We can have a conversation or I will update in a future video. Maybe I still want to try it out, but let's move into the good products. These are products I like, but they have a couple things that I want to mention, or maybe they would be better suited for a certain person. So let's go over that. So I want to start off with a deodorant and you're going to be like, what? Well, I picked up the Sol de Janeiro Rio Dio. This is aluminum free deodorant and essentially it smells like their Boom Boom Cream, which is just amazing if you've smelled it. So I really like this. This is a great deodorant. It's very hydrating on your underarms. It doesn't skip or kind of grab. I know I've tried some in the past that were aluminum free, but they were really heavy, I think on like baking soda, and they would just like give me a rash. This has not done that. It smells just like the Boom Boom Cream and it's quite strong. The only thing I will say is this is not gonna be like a 12 hour get me through the day deodorant if I was going out, let's say to a concert or something like that. This is an everyday throw it on, maybe in seven, eight hours, maybe throw on a little bit more. So it doesn't have like perfect odor protection. I found that Old Spice actually does the best for me recently in terms of like long day when I'm sweating. So if I really want that like no smell for the entire day, I would use the Old Spice. Yeah, it's the Old Spice Deep Sea. I really like the ones in this packaging. That's what I would reach for if I was going to a cookout or I was gonna be around people all day and I really wanted to make sure that I had no odor coming through. But when I'm around the house, I've been reaching for the Rio Dio and it just smells amazing. You can smell it all day. But I will say it is very strong in the sense that it can clash with certain perfumes. So if I wanna wear a fruity perfume or more of a floral, I don't tend to reach for this. This meshes well with my really, you know, marshmallow vanilla type scents because it does kind of coincide. So just know that if you wear 
a really fruity floral perfume. It might clash because this is really heavily scented, but I really like it. No irritation. It's just not a 12 hour odor protection for me personally. It's more of like a seven or eight hour. Along with the deodorant, they did come out with a dry shampoo. So I like this. It's in the good category, but I really want to give you just my insight on using this. So it smells just like the Boom Boom Cream. If you're looking for something that's really going to give you that nice scent in your hair, almost like a scent perfume, I think you'd really enjoy this. I do not find that this is as intense at soaking up oils like the Batiste or the First Class from IGK. So for me, this is more of like a, uh, I feel a little bit like, you know, I need to freshen up and I want to spritz it a little bit to get a nice scent going through my hair and less of a, I have really greasy hair and I really want to soak up the oils. It's not the best in terms of actually soaking up the oils. It does a little bit, but it's really for me more of like a, ooh, that smells good. I want my hair to smell good kind of product. So if you have really oily scalp and you need like a intense dry shampoo this is not going to be for you but if you want to kind of spritz this through your hair and kind of tossle it a little bit just to give you a nice refresh and a scent boost I think that's what it's good for. Another product I picked up in that haul that I'm sort of surprised isn't in the great category for me this is the Olaplex number no. eight bond intense moisture mask. It says moisturizes smooths and adds body and shine. I'm a huge fan of Olaplex. I would say their number no. three is the best mask ever if you have really damaged hair. Use that once or twice a week and it really does help. I liked this, but I wasn't wowed. I liked the way my hair felt. It didn't feel overly hydrated. It just kind of felt maybe a little bit more smooth and I don't know, I didn't really notice much with it, I guess. And the other thing I will say is I thought, okay, they gave you a little bit more product, but I had to use so much of it. And it says on the back, start with two pumps for short hair. No, for shoulder length hair. I mean, my hair is longer and thicker, but I really had to use like 10 to 15 pumps to really coat my hair. So I just felt like I didn't see really a huge difference. It was kind of like, yeah, this is a light, conditioner, it kind of moisturized my hair, maybe smoothed it a little bit, but I really felt like I only got maybe like five uses out of this bottle and I wasn't wowed to the point where I was like, I need to repurchase this. So I like it. I think it's nice in the sense that it doesn't weigh my hair down or make it super fine to the point where I can't style it, but I just didn't notice anything really spectacular about it. So for me, it's good, but I don't know if it's worth the price. I have a few primers that are in the good category, so let's start off with the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. So this is what it swatches like. It's a very thin serum. I love the packaging on this. It has that watermelon scent, and honestly, this is just a really nice base if you like a glowy makeup look. So it's really nice under makeup. It gives you a little bit of a grip to really grip your makeup on, and it really just gives you a nice hydration. I didn't notice anything spectacular with it just because, again, it's just like a nice serum that's really good if you have dry skin or maybe dry areas. I tend to put it more so on my forehead and just kind of give me that hydration. I don't know if I'm wowed by it. Like, there was nothing that really blew me away. I don't feel that my makeup looks world's better or smoother or anything like that, but it does provide a really nice base for makeup, especially if you want a little bit more of that glowy look. So I like it. I think it's nice. I'll continue to use it, but I didn't notice that it's like stood out in my collection. I have similar thoughts on the Rare Beauty Pore Primer. This is the pore diffusing primer. I got the mini. So this reminds me a lot of like the Smashbox oil control primer in the texture of it. It is a gel texture. It does have that silicone slip to it, but it's nothing too crazy like the Benefit Professional or anything like that. So it does a nice job at sort of gliding over your T-zone, but again, nothing's gonna beat my Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. This is one that I could use all over my face though. So the Tarte, I really am only gonna put right here, whereas this one, it's just a nice, even base for your entire face. Again, if you have really large pores, like I do right around your nose or wherever it is and you really are insecure about it, this would not be like my top pick. I don't dislike it. It's more of like an all over, give me a nice canvas to work with, but I really like the Tarte for my pores. So I like it, but again, nothing that's really crazy wowing me, so I probably won't repurchase. The last primer that I had to mention is this new Lorac 
Pro Dewy Canvas Prep. They came out with this with their powders. So this is really heavy duty, but I don't like that I have to like dig my nails in to get the product. This very much reminds me of the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. It has that gel like texture, but when you do blend it in, it is rich, very dewy. For me, it's too much. In my T-zone, it can get very heavy, accentuate my texture, just get oily. So I would say if you have dry skin, this is probably gonna be your best friend. If you really love that insanely hydrated, dewy look to your skin, I think you would quite enjoy this. I mean, this is much, uh, more moisturizing than the niacinamide drops in my opinion the texture on this It's just a very thick emollient Hydrating I guess moisturizer, which is what it's I mean, it's called the dewy canvas prep So again, I like this but I have to be mindful It cannot go in my t-zone because then I will get that really heavy cakey look and also get quite oily But I think it's just not geared for my skin type I would say this is definitely for those of you with dry skin also a product that I like but I wasn't wowed by so I'm gonna put it in the good category. This is the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. I have the shade Golden Ivory, and I had mentioned that the shade, I wish I would have gone for more of a peachy shade. I still haven't picked up another one. I just feel like I'm drowning in color correctors and concealers, and I don't like the packaging because you can't really control how much comes out, and then it gets messy on the cap, but this product, I think is a good product if you use it for what it's intended for. For me, this is not going to be a full color coverage glam type of concealer. For me, this is more of a no makeup makeup. So I wanna pat this under my eyes. I want a little bit of brightening just to kind of take the edge off my dark circles or blueness under my eyes and then I wanna go. Or I wanna put this under concealer. So use it to brighten a little bit and then use a concealer for coverage. So it's not gonna give you a ton of coverage. So for me, it's not really a standalone product. It's more of a everyday, let me throw this on just so that my eyes look a little bit more bright and awake. So I like it, but I. I think what's throwing me off is the shade. I do need to get a peachy shade, but I don't know if I wanna buy one right now because I just have so much just stuff that I'm enjoying. Like I'm loving the NARS uh, color correctors. Let me know down below, what are your thoughts on this? I feel like it's a good product. It does what it says it's gonna do. It does brighten and sort of illuminate. It's very thin. It doesn't enhance your texture, but I just feel like I need a little bit more coverage to really wow me. Also in the good category, I have the Jaclyn Cosmetics and these are her lip cushions. So she came out with these along with the blushes and I have to say I really like these they're beautiful They have that moussey texture and I really like the formula My only complaint is these are really really bright and I tend to wear sort of lighter pinks or Sort of what I'm wearing today like peachy neutral shades most days These are a little bit bright for me to make them like a top like these are amazing Definitely for those of you that want that pop in the summertime. I love the formula. They smell incredible, like a, like a beach, but they're just very poppy, a little bit um, just more bright or deeper than I typically go for. That's the only reason I'm not really reaching for these every day. No complaints on the formula, but just wish there was a little bit more neutral colors to choose from. And the last product in the good category, also from Jaclyn Cosmetics, these are her Luminous Rouge Loose Blushes. I have to say packaging 100% A+. I love that she made the J on them coincide with the shade. I just think that was such a beautiful touch. These are beautiful products. I just prefer her six pan palettes because you just dip in and bam, you have the pigment. These are a little bit more customizable. You can build these up and these are more like toppers. That's kind of how she said she uses them. Now I did say I would update and tell you if you could use them alone and you absolutely can. They're just a little bit deeper in color. So I think that's maybe another reason why they're not like my top pick. So they have a nice luminosity to them but no glitter and they don't enhance your texture which is what I was afraid of. I know Jaclyn has like damn near perfect skin and I do not but I'm going to sort of put this on the back of my hand so you can see there's a little bit of a glow but it's quite sheer so this is a buildable product and Jacqueline says that she uses it over her cream to powder or over her blush palettes. So that's kind of how I see these in the most useful way. I've used them alone multiple times and it was fine, but I prefer them as a topper or over my nose to give me a little bit of a glow. So I think they're beautiful. If you like a glowy blush, I think this might be for you because they do have a nice, just lit from within quality to them. But again, loose blushes are not my top pick just because they can be messy. We don't really see those a lot, but I 
think the formula is exactly what she said it was. I just really love the matte blushes the best, but I like these. I think they're beautiful. I'll continue to use them as toppers. Okay, so I feel like this video is so long. I'm trying to move quickly, but we're gonna move into the not so great category. These are products I don't love. I'm gonna declutter, just not for me, and I'm gonna tell you why. I thankfully don't have that many. Lots of products really fall into the good category, but these ones just were not it for me. So let's start off with one you're probably not surprised by if you've been watching my channel. That's gonna be the Tatcha Silk Powder. This made my under eyes look incredibly dry and I really don't usually have that issue. Something about the little glowy particles in here just did not look good on me. It really clung and just made me look so textured and dry. I think the packaging is cute. The color is fine. It's a very fine powder, but something about this just really clung to any sort of dryness and really made me look textured. I just do not love this. And for that price, I'm looking for smoothing. Really any powder, I want to look as smooth as possible. That's what I'm looking for, especially in a loose powder. This did nothing, no favors for my skin. And for that price, I cannot recommend this. I was also quite disappointed in this Artist Couture eyeshadow palette that I picked up. This is the Ethereal Bloom. I bought this, I believe, during the sale. I thought the packaging was gorgeous and I love the color story, but I have to say that the formula is one of the hardest formulas that I've worked with recently. I mean, you can look at my eyes today. I, I'm wearing the Lunar Beauty palette and I had zero issues punching this up, blending it. It was so pigmented, beautiful. And that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping that I could get sort of similar vibes with like these shades and then I could maybe use this peachy sort of neon shade in the crease. Honestly, the toppers are chunky and they don't stick in certain areas and then they grab in others. They look very textured and uneven on the eyelids, which is not something I typically see. And the mattes you have to build up incredibly. I had to do like five layers of this purple. I've tried these shades and I just am not a fan of this. I don't wanna work that hard for eyeshadow palettes when there's so many beautiful formulas. So I love the packaging, but unfortunately I just won't reach for this. I would much rather use the Huda Mercury Retrograde because it performs better. I did just pick up his new palette, the Artist Couture one, so I'm hoping that that will be better. It's like the sister to the Supreme Nudes, which was very highly rated. So we'll try that out, but this was a dud for me. Another disappointing product that I thought would be a dupe for the P. Louise base that everybody loves. I really thought this had potential, but it was bad from the start. So this is the Juvia's Place Eye Prep Eye Prime Eye Primer. I have the shade one. I believe there was three different shades. So when I first squeezed this out, it came out very separated and oily. Now it's not doing that now, but when I put this on, and you could see in the video, it's a little bit creamier. Like again, it had that oil, so when I first squirted it out, it was like oil and then chunks of pigment. It wasn't mixed right, so that was the first thing. But when you feel this, it's much creamier than the P. Louise, but I think the P. Louise one works so well because it has that really kind of nice dry down where you don't have to set it. This one also made my lids look so dry and crepey. It looked horrible in the video that I tried it. I've tried it a few more times since then and I just can't deal with the separation and also just that it looks really dry and textured. Like every little dry patch I had on my eyelids that I didn't even know about was showing up with this. So unfortunately, it's just not something that I'm wowed by. I've seen some people really enjoy it. For me, I would much rather just use a concealer or I do have my P. Louise that I'm using up. I know a few brands are coming out with products that are similar to this or the P. Louise one, but this one was just a flop for me. And I'm gonna finish this video off with a product that I already returned. I don't have it in my collection and I really disliked it. This is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This looked so bad on my skin. I didn't like the way it felt. It was very heavy and almost sticky, and it accentuated my texture like no other. Now, when I did set it down with powder, it did help, but it was just so heavy. I felt like I got gunky around my T-zone. It looked absolutely horrific before I put powder on, like almost embarrassingly bad. Like I was looking at my skin like, Every single pore and texture that I had was just on display. It did not wear well. Again, it was very heavy, and then I felt like it was transferring throughout the day. It just felt like I literally smeared lip gloss all over my face. It just was not 
not good for me. Now, I've seen people really enjoy it. I do enjoy some serum foundations or more natural foundations, but something about that one was just so incredibly heavy for me, and it just made my skin look really bad, which obviously I don't want that. I'd rather just wear no foundation. So I did return it because it was probably one of the worst foundations on me personally that I've tried recently. All right, guys, so that finally concludes this three hour long video. I'm gonna have fun editing this, but I tried to talk about as many products as possible. And if I miss something, comment down below and I'll let you know my thoughts. Maybe I'm still using it or maybe it just slipped my mind. There's just so many products, like thinking about lip liners, lipsticks, glosses, so much stuff. So I tried to really zone in on the products that you guys have been asking me about. But again, just comment down below if I miss something. I will link everything that I talked about today in my description box in case you're interested. And I'll try to link my makeup as well if I can fit it because I talked about so much stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you want more of these. I need to be better about doing them every single month. There's so much makeup. I'm trying to keep up, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you're new. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.